Hi, and welcome to Horror Recapped. In today's video, we will be explaining the 2015 film, Sinister 2. When a broken family tries to start over in a new home, things start to go wrong when the twins discover a box of old home movies. Watch out, spoilers ahead, enjoy. Our film starts with an old film reel that shows three individuals hanging on crosses and a small hand appears that throws a lighter onto the ground as the flame sets a gasoline trail on fire. The three individuals burn as they're engulfed in flames. Suddenly, Dylan wakes up from his nightmare and sees a creepy figure in his closet. A split second later, a ghostly boy is next to him startling him out of bed. The next day, we see a man, formerly a deputy, is headed into a church to confess. When the priest arrives, he notices who he is, and he tries to get him to talk about what otherworldly things he might have uncovered. The deputy mentions that whatever happened before is only going to happen again. Next, we see Dylan and Zach playing guns in the grocery store, and their mother, Courtney, continues shopping throughout the store. She thinks that she spotted someone watching her, and when the man snaps a picture of her, she prepares the boys to run. When it becomes clear that she's being followed, the three of them make a run for their car, and they drive off out of town. When they get home, she notices that Dylan is troubled by something, and he looks to the abandoned church in the backyard. After he heads inside the home, Courtney goes into the old church to continue working on some furniture. She begins to hear clanking sounds coming from behind the altar, and she goes to investigate. Soon, Dylan pops up in the church to tell her that dinner is ready, but he starts to feel uneasy inside the church. She tries to tell him that it's just an old building, but in Dylan's eyes, blood is seeping through the floorboards. That night, Zach tells Courtney that he's worried about Dylan. Meanwhile, Dylan speaks to a boy named Milo that has appeared in his room. Milo wants to show him something, and he leads Dylan to the basement. He shows Dylan an old box with a record. Suddenly, a boy named Ted appears, and he hands Dylan a home reel of his family. As the home reel plays, we see that Ted actually fed his family to the gators behind their house. Dylan is freaked out by it, and runs back up to his room. The next day, the deputy arrives in town and he pulls up to the house Courtney and the boys have been staying at. He grabs cans of gasoline out of the back of his truck and he runs into Zach in the yard. Courtney comes out to tell the deputy that no one is taking the boys away from her and he knows immediately that there has been a misunderstanding. After going inside for a cup of coffee, he explains to her that he is a private investigator now and he's here to look into similarities of cold cases. She explains that she's there to hide from her abusive husband, and technically, the property is abandoned since the crimes that happened in the old church. The deputy explains that he doesn't want to walk around a creepy murder scene at night, so he tells her that he'll come back in the morning to investigate. That night, the kids ask Courtney if the deputy was there for what happened in the church, and she asks them how they know about it. The kids tell her that they just heard it around, but after Courtney leaves, Zach asks Dylan what happened in the church. Back at the deputy's hotel room, he investigates Courtney's story, but while he does that, his computer starts to show him crimes that took place in the church. When he looks away for a second, we can see a monstrous figure, Bagul, standing in the background of his room. He slowly approaches, and the deputy is startled when the symbols appear on his laptop. That night, Milo tries to get Dylan to watch another home video, but he refuses. After he goes to sleep, he finds himself sleepwalking into the basement, and when he wakes up, he sees Emma waiting for him with her home video. When they watch her film, we see that it's Christmas morning and everyone is happy. That takes a terrible turn when she buries her family in the freezing snow at night. The next morning, Dylan sees the creepy kids in the yard and Zach tells him that he can see them too. Just then, the deputy pulls up and Courtney takes him back to the church. Once inside, he compares crime scene photos to the actual place and he starts to look around for what is causing the clinking noise behind the altar. As he explores the back hallways of the church, he finds that the chalice from the crime is moving around on the floor which is causing the clinking noise. After he throws a rock at it, he finds out that it's only a rat that has been moving it. When he looks behind him, he thinks he can make out the shadow of young children, but suddenly, Bagul appears in front of him. Startled, he runs out and accepts a phone call. He finds out that his professor friend has gone missing, but he left a clue to the mystery behind. The deputy tells the caller that he'll be there tomorrow to see what it is. As the deputy goes to leave, he spots Dylan sulking on the porch. He finds out that Dylan is having nightmares living in the house. But while they talk, a truck pulls up on the property. Soon, Courtney's husband shows up with the state troopers, and they try to take the boys. 
The deputy gets in the middle and works his knowledge of the system to get them to leave. After they leave, Courtney decides that she's going to take the boys and leave the house, but the deputy convinces her that that's a bad idea. A solid middle ground is found where she invites the deputy to stay. After explaining his previous career to the boys during dinner, he prepares to leave, but Dylan convinces him to stay the night. When he can't sleep, he sits at the table to look over the crime scene photos again. When he looks closer, he notices that an image of Bagul moves, and it startles him. Courtney comes downstairs and drinks with him. We find out that the deputy was actually fired because the sheriff was mad that he went behind his back to help Ellison, a former friend who was murdered. Then we find out that Courtney's husband actually beat Dylan, and that's the reason why she's trying to get away from him. While they swing and talk outside, Milo visits Dylan again, and Dylan reluctantly comes down to watch yet another film. This time, the child floods the kitchen and electrocutes the entire family. When Dylan leaves the basement, he sneaks back upstairs, but he doesn't know that Zack watches him silently. Zack heads down into the basement to ask Milo why they didn't choose him, and Milo assures him that Dylan is better. Back upstairs, the deputy and Courtney stumble back inside drunkenly, and they kiss. Somehow, the deputy makes it to the couch, and in the morning, he leaves her his phone number on a post-it note. Once at the university, the professor shows him his ham radio setup, and he tells him of a legendary transmission that has come through in the past that mentions the name, Bagul. This professor explains that there are always three things in common. There is always a murdered family, a missing child, and a thematic offering through some form of media or art. When the deputy mentions that he's found another house, the professor begs him to just burn it down, but the deputy tells him that he can't since a family is already living there. It's then that he realizes that he just left a house with Bagul that has two young kids, and he rushes out to get back to them. Meanwhile, back at the farm, Zack is bullying Dylan because he can't understand why they chose him, but Milo and the kids appear and back up Dylan. Courtney finds out about the brother's scuffle, but she can't really think of a punishment. She goes back to try and comfort Dylan, but he blames her for letting the bad things happen to him between his father and Zack. That night, Dylan goes to the basement to tell Milo that he doesn't want to watch any more videos, but Milo urges him to watch his own home video. In Milo's, we see that it is set in the old church building in the back. During a normal Sunday service, the family partakes in communion, and we find out that Milo used this as a way to drug them. He nails the family to the ground, and Bagul sends rats onto their abdomens, while Milo straps chalices over the rats. Then, he takes hot coals and sets them on the top of the chalices. This causes the rats to burrow through his family members, and blood covers the floor as the rats eat their way out of the family. After the film is done, they try to tell Dylan that there is just one more, but Dylan runs out of the house to escape them. He makes his way into the old church, and Bagul begins to chase him through the halls. When he comes face to face with Milo and the children again, Milo explains that the films weren't really meant for him. When he gets back to the house, he finds Zack watching the final reel. The next morning, Courtney's husband appears at the door, and he serves her papers that say that he has the right to take the children. He offers for her to come home with him and the kids when she goes up to tell Dylan that they have to leave the house. He tries to tell her that she doesn't understand what will happen if they leave, but she tells him that there's nothing she can really do about it. That night, the deputy arrives at the farm, and he sees that they have left. He tries to call her, but it turns out that she's at the dinner table with the rest of the family. When the deputy finds out that she's with her husband, he does what he's best at, and finds her. Back at the husband's house, the father notices that Dylan really isn't eating his dinner. When Dylan says that he's not that hungry, his father force feeds him like an animal until Courtney screams at him. Later that night, the deputy shows up at the husband's door and tries to tell him that he needs to talk to Courtney. He doesn't take to that well, and he beats the deputy all the way back to his truck. The next day, Zack finds the old camera, and he videotapes the rest of his family from the cornfield. Dylan gets a hold of his mother's phone, and he reaches out to the deputy for help. That night, Zack prepares the family for slaughter by erecting the crosses in the cornfield. After Zack films the father burning, the deputy pulls up and sees the fire in the field. Zack tries to light the lighter for Dylan, but the deputy comes through the field and hits Zack with his truck. After the deputy cuts Courtney and Dylan down, Zack picks up the camera and scythe and chases them through the corn. Zack manages to cut off a few of the deputy's fingers, but they make it into the house where they try to hide from him. One of the spirits spots the deputy and they lead Zack through the house until they find the family. Finally, the deputy destroys the camera and reel and Zack rushes upstairs to look for another camera. Once he realizes that there isn't another one, the spirits show up to tell him how mad Bagul will be. Just then, Bagul shows up to take Zack to his realm. Bagul sets the reel on fire, 
and the house starts to burn down. Once the deputy, Courtney, and Dylan make it safely outside, they embrace each other and watch the house burn. They leave to go to the hotel for the deputy to pick up all of his belongings, but Bagul takes him by surprise. Ending the film. We hope you've enjoyed watching this recap. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can watch any of our other horror film recaps.